let me start the recording and then I'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. All right, okay. so why don't we talk about positioning, you know, two seconds into the game. So um, first off, um, I, I don't I can't recall because it's been a long while since we've had our last session. So have we ever discussed No Man's Land as, in terms of positioning? Yeah, when you can't get to cover. Okay. Um, no, that's that, that's an absence oh, of cover, okay. right? So, okay. so No Man's Land is any long stretch of space where there is no cover at all, right? So Yeah, the, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't easily retreat around a corner or whatever. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you're on a payload map, right, pretty much the entirety of this entire pathway is No Man's Land. So mm -hmm. in terms of how you hold uh, pay No Man's Land, right, I, as a reminder, in case we had discussed that, um, is you don't hold in the front of it or the middle of it, because if you hold in the front of it or the middle of it, then you have to walk backwards through the no man's land, and they don't have to walk through this long, open no man's land, right? And instead, we want to look to hold at the back of the no man's land, not in front of it. So here... This is pretty bad positioning because this means it's, that... I, I kind yeah. of thought you might say this, right? But, like, yeah. my issue with Sigma, uh, who I've been playing a lot of and mm. I quite like, is that you can't reach from the back. Mm. And yeah, but... So it feels like yeah. for a while that you're not going to be being, I guess. Mm. That's so that, 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 is going, that is true, but they're going to be pushing within your, your reach very, very soon. You're, it's not like they're going to be sitting outside of your reach for the next 30 seconds to a minute. They're probably, I would imagine, are going to push to within the distance where you're at, right? So let's say we're on this high ground, for example, which is where you would, should be positioned, right? Let's just walk yeah, through that. Okay. And, and, and normally, mm. funnily enough, I often do. And <laughs> I just always feel like we give them the first bit of ground and then get overrun. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. So this positioning, right, is usually going to be to be best, right? And then you would uh, dr let them walk through this big long area, spam out the whole time. Then as they get beneath you, you're going to rotate back and drop on this corner, right? That is general positioning. You can the only time you'd ever hold it like close in their spawn is if you're running a spawn holding comp, right? So for example, you're running like a very hard brawl or like a May or a Bastion, and you're just holding in their spawn. That's all okay. Um, but if you're running the comp we're currently on, we probably should not be doing that. So we have a 20 meter range on our on our shots, right? So from here, we can pretty much shoot people if they're within like this distance where I'm at right here. So if they once they cross this line, then we can shoot at them, which I would imagine they're probably going to have at least somebody cross that line within the first like five to ten seconds of the game starting, which means you're not going to be too long from being able okay. to shoot at people, right? Yep. And they're going to be pushing the cart there pretty fast, and therefore, again, you're not going to have too much time where you can't shoot at people. Um, and then this gives you high ground positioning, which is always going to be really, really powerful. It's going to make it so that they have to walk through this, in, like the their the positioning which they have to walk through is this entire no man's land, all the way to here, right? No man's land the whole way through. Whereas if we're standing here, well now we're just working with this tiny little no man's land, right? It's the difference between those two. And when we're up here, we we don't have to deal with any no man's land behind us, right? No man's land. You know, no no man's land behind us, right? Here, um, there is technically no man's land, but we have cover that we can use to where the no man's land over here, we're not standing in the middle of this, right? And whereas if we were to stand where we're at right now, well, now notice how we have to walk all the way back through this whole long stretch of space, which is meaning that we have to walk backwards through more no man's land than they have to walk forwards through, right? So yep. overall, hold high ground, you know, walk backwards <laughs> from there. <laughs> Missing out on, you know, five seconds of damage isn't, you know, Ball would have done the same thing if, I, I would imagine, even if you were positioned on the high ground, you would have been in the same spot at the same time. So you would have had something to shoot at within, you know, five seconds of the round starting. All right, wait, why, why, I'm sorry, I'm out of your POV for some reason. Um, let's go back to us. Oh, um, so when it comes to Reinhardt, usually it's just a good idea to make sure we're not standing in front of him. So typically you want to kind of stand to his left or his right the same way, like, you know, chart. I didn't even see him. Yeah, so it, then in that case, right, if, if we don't see the Reinhardt, then that's going to be an awareness thing. Uh, first off, audio awareness, especially here, because he 
is just appearing around the corner. So the, our biggest indicator of the fact that he's there is us listening to him and his big clunky footsteps and his um, maybe fire strike that he just fired and then his charging sound. And then besides that, making sure we're also watching for him. Um, so the, the mainly audio awareness. Right now he does end up not slamming us into anything, which is good. Activating the barriers. Be like friends as I know that I missed those, so I don't need to be. No. <laughs> I actually played way, way better on this uh, on attack than Diva, but I um, was just trying to work out what really went wrong so badly on defense. Mm. This Reinhardt was right. really weird the way he played. Alright, so, um, as of the moment, let's uh, let, let's rewind a little bit. So, I was just taking a look at some things, um, possibly noting at the moment that we are missing a lot of our second shot when we just fire normal left clicks we typically seem to be missing the second one a lot of the time so making sure that we are intentionally hitting both of them and not just looking at them and then looking away immediately but tracking through to hit both shots because that's going to get you double the damage but besides that let's talk a little bit about positioning and just awareness in general here All right so let's go back a little bit back to this point right here so we're walking forward so we see we're down zarya right so as of the moment Right, these are this is what the fight looks like. Right, it's a one two versus a one two three four. Right, so currently it's a two v four. Um, so in the situation, they also are down. Some people, their people are low. So I would say at the moment we are looking for like a little bit of a more passive um, approach at the moment. We don't want to get super aggressive because we are down people. Right, but then we end up pushing forwards kind of into them here. And we get pretty aggressive, like we do push forwards, like all the way up here, which um, maybe is slightly aggressive. Now we're about to get another player back. Um, I think the main problem is what we're going to see in a moment here. Alright, so we get shot at. We're backing up. Alright, so let's look at this fight a little bit as of the moment. So it's a 1, 2, 3, and then 4 up here, right? Versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right now we're down a person, um, which means that we might want to just play slightly more passive because we're at a slight disadvantage. But let's look at the fact that like they kind of get on top of us. So um, have we discussed at all in the past um, team compositions on how team comps interact with each other? Like a little bit, but not, not masses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about that then. So let me, I'm going to share with you something real quick. I'm going to give you a picture. So this is a picture that goes over different team comps and how they interact with each other, like I said. Um, so are you familiar with Dive, Brawl, and Spam and what those, what com those comps are? A little. I know like Dive, you know, like Diva Winston is kind of a classic Dive because mm. they both literally dive on people and just um so yeah. i know a little bit about it but not masses okay uh what what do you know what composition would be a brawl composition for example uh like brian and brig and like close range mm -hmm. fighters you're correct uh and then what would a spam be uh i guess like uh hanzo and uh, uh i don't know ash junk rat those yeah. Kinds of characters. So yeah, you've got it pretty much right. Dive is going to be very fast paced, um, high intensity characters, very mobile, right? Trace it, think Tracer, Genji, Doomfist, Echo, Fara, right? Monkey, Diva, Win uh, Winston. Or I just said monkey twice. Uh, monkey, Diva, and mm. Wrecking Ball, right? And then like Ana, Mercy, and Yada fit well with it, right? Brig. Um, then your Brawl is going to be very close range characters. So think Ryan, Zarya, Lucio, Brig. Think Ana. Think Baptiste. Think uh, Reaper, May, right? The Junkrat. Those types of characters, right? Spam. Think very long ranged characters. So think uh, Rissa, Sigma, 
which is us, Sigma, Roadhog, um, think uh, with DP within DPS, Junkrat, Hanzo, Widow, very long range characters, and then supports would be like Mercies and Baptiste, right? So those are the different team compositions. But let's, let's talk about how they interact with each other. So dive is very standard. It's very easy to understand. Like the, it, nothing super special about the way dive works in terms of pacing and in terms of positioning. They start off far away and then they dive in close and then their pacing is that they start off slow and then they get faster and faster as they get abilities and or sorry as they get opportunities right as they get picks as they get kills as they get ultimates then they're playing more and more aggressive right so real quick um Sorry, never mind. I don't know why I said it real quick, but in any case, brawl, right? Moving on to brawl, um, brawl and spam are much more e they're very easy to understand and easy to implement within your gameplay. Spam, right, is a very far range composition, right? They are far range characters, and then therefore, because they are far range characters, they prefer very slow pacing. The longer the fight takes, the more time they have to shoot at somebody. So think, for example, right, going back to the game that we're currently in, it's your main tanks on both teams are a Reinhardt and a Sigma. Who's closer range and who's further range out of the two of them? Definitely Sigma, obviously further range. Reinhardt yeah. wants to get caught okay. close, yeah. So what happens if Reinhardt gets on top of us? Just hammers the shit out of us. <laughs> right. So we're, we are at the disadvantage. We're probably going to lose if yeah. he gets on top of us. Yeah. Right? yeah. So therefore, Sigma wants to play far away and as slow as mm -hmm. possible against the Reinhardt and their brawl composition because then he can spam mm -hmm. them the entire time and they can't shoot back. Brawl, on the other hand, or the Reinhardt, he he because he is a close range character, he wants to play really fast and run straight on top of you because the faster he gets on top of you, the less time you have to shoot at him. And then hybrid, hybrid is just anytime you don't really have a particular composition. Um, usually, if you have four or more characters of a particular comp, you are running that comp. So think, for example, our composition right now, we are running Sigma, Hanzo, Mercy, and Soldier, which are all spam characters. So therefore, we are running a spam composition. Um, but if, uh, but then let's like look at the enemy team comp. Um, they don't have a particular comp. They are a mix between, like they have three brawl characters and two spam characters and then a dive character, right? So they're kind of a mix between things and then therefore they would be a hybrid comp. And they're gonna be a lot more all over the place, a lot more doing, everyone's doing their own thing. Sorry, excuse me there. I had my baby sister call into the room. Um, in any case, right, moving on. So th that's what we're working with at the moment. Back to the to the game we're in. Mm -hmm. Right, so here we let Reinhardt get on top of us. Right, mm -hmm. so positioning wise, and and how we want to be playing is we want to be playing as far away from Reinhardt as we can. And Reinhardt does not, as of the moment, he doesn't have Lucia with him. So the only way Reinhardt can get to us is if he walks towards us, and he has the exact same movement speed as us if we just walk away from him. So here Reinhardt's only able to get on top of us if we let him walk at us. Right, so make sure that we are walking away from him. Probably would be a good idea that we had backed up earlier in the fight and we weren't mm -hmm. standing so close. This way we put mm -hmm. more distance because we're a distance character. Possibly mm -hmm. could have been like taking the high ground if we wanted to, getting a high ground advantage. But here the big problem is that we just like kind of let Reinhardt get on top of us for free instead mm -hmm. of running away, instead of taking high ground, instead of playing far away. We let him get on top of us and then therefore we're able to get pressure by them very easily. Um, I'm also noticing, um, and you you, know, you told me not to, but I'm going to focus on it if it's it, a repeat habitual thing. Um, Grasp does not seem to be getting value at all. Um, it's yeah, not. Yeah, I, I, I kind of assumed you because he wasn't swinging his hammer. I kind of assumed he was going to fire strike me, and but he didn't. So. Yeah, which in a lot of cases, since fire strike is a projectile and it has a charge up time, you're going to be able to react to that rather than. Um, use it before he uses it right mm -hmm. um instead of predict it because it's usually going to be easier to react if it's a very slow moving projectile that again has a charge up time to it so i'd probably watch for it more than i would look to predict him mm -hmm. using it mm -hmm. 
And then in general as well, we've also just seen that I think that's maybe like the third time or fourth time that we I've seen a guy just eat nothing at all. So in mm-hmm. general, make sure we're using it when we know damage is coming in. Not when we think damage mm-hmm. is coming in, when we know damage is coming in. And then yeah. therefore, we're going to be able to actually get useful value out of it and have it get it give us shields and have a have it you know get us I actual mean, tanking i mean i i don't i don't want to sound like i'm just trying to defend myself here but yeah. i think i was playing unusually badly for sigma here i was kind oh, of all you know we kind of got pushed and i kind of panicked mm-hmm. and um i mean he's one of the characters that i've climbed like mm-hmm. virtually a, a thousand sr with um uh-huh. so Did you... I, I think that this is probably a little unrepresentative of my normal okay. I, yeah like i said i think that i got better in this game but i was kind mm-hmm. of playing a bit panicked yeah. here we were kind of getting pushed all over the place and for, they're a bit like erratic so. very very understandable right usually that's and that's why i put that within the criteria of uh of odds is that you know if you're not playing some if you're not playing to the best of, or to average ability then this type of thing will happen where i comment on things that you don't feel like you struggle with so if is do you feel like you play poorly up to a certain part in this game do you like know where that yeah part would be? Uh, um like Probably until I switched. I think I switched to D. De- I think I switched to Diva on defense. I can't really Would you remember. But I'd... Like to skip to that point? Uh, yeah. Maybe Wait. I didn't. Oh, you did. Um... Here it is. All right. Oh. All right. So already just with defense matrix usage. Um. I think we'll go more in depth on this if we need to, but just keep in mind you defend. I just I'll real quick mention it is just you want to make sure that you're intentionally watching for abilities, and then because we do get slept and fire struck here when we could have eaten both of them, and then we want to make sure we're not defense matrixing either random spam or just nothing at all. Here, there's not even anything at all happening. Therefore, that defense matrix was you know. Uh, wasted but then sometimes a lot of people will just eat random spam and that's also not useful so we'll talk yeah, about yeah. we'll go more in depth on that if we need to but that's just for the moment no that's what the mistake was there all right um if you're going if your plan is to drop in and get aggressive like this it probably be, be a better idea, idea to save missiles for when we're going in and getting more aggressive and then therefore they're going to be a lot more accurate and they're going to do you're going to do more burst damage with it because when we're getting closer is when we're doing all the damage because obviously our left you know when we're shooting we do a lot more damage when we're closer to people so we might want to save missiles for when we're actually going in rather than just kind of using it from a high grounds on them um, besides that, let's look a little bit at target priority coming in here. Now, Ball does get low, but he's not low this entire time here. So let's look at this right here. Okay. Ball versus Ana, for example. Um, in general, you have a target priority list. Did we ever talk about target priority at all? Yeah, no, yeah. pick squish, you just kill this support, and then, yeah, I know. Yeah. I do try and think about it. Mm-hmm. So in this instance, we do end up going for the wrong target, but then Ball does end up actually getting low because he just runs into your team, and now he becomes the new target because he is low HP. So that's completely fine. You know, watching for sleep once again. Um, make sure we're intentionally watching for it. When we're up in an Ana's face, it can be almost assumed that she's going to be using it soon. Yeah, she's just slept me twice in like <laughs> a couple seconds. She must have just had it recharged to sleep me again. Okay, like we're retaking high ground, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I triggered it. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I, I noticed myself do that stuff, and I think, uh, yeah. At least I notice it now. This is, you know, a bit more direct. I've got to read through my face. <laughs> so, in this situation, right, let's look at our, our, like, how our team comp works, right? So, right now, 
We're on a Hanzo and a Mercy and a McCree, Roadhog, and Ana. So as of the moment, we're a little bit out of place with our character and probably Sigma. I think th there's a possibility because we I did end up skipping through a lot of it, but there's a possibility that we just swapped because we weren't feeling like Sigma. Uh, like we, we felt like we were doing bad on Sigma and we just wanted to kind of mix some things up, right? Yeah. And I would imagine yeah, that was the case. Really. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So here in this situation, Diva does not particularly go super great with our composition. In fact, this is the composition in which diva works the most poorly with um as diva likes is a inherently a divey and brawly character and likes to get up in people's faces she's a very close range character and spam is the exact opposite of that which is what most of our team comp is um mm -hmm. so their team on the other hand is a full brawl composition without besides the wrecking ball their entire team comp is a brawl comp and therefore if we are to try to go in 1v6, we're going to get absolutely shredded, right? So we want to, what I would say to this is make sure we're picking our battles much more carefully. Diva is what you call an opportunist character. So every character in the game acts based off of opportunity, but there's certain characters that specifically watch for opportunities and act in opportunities more than others. So think, for example, Tracer and Genji are like this. Um, I'd say Monkey's a little bit like this. Wrecking Ball is like this, right? So D how Diva likes to operate with this is she looks for opportunities that could be somebody is out of position thing um you know think for example if they had a support in the back line who's off by themselves somebody's low hp genji right now would be an opportunity right because genji is isolated by himself and w one hp which would make it very easily for you very very easy for you to boost at him and just melt him in half a second right um and diva because of her high mobility and versatility is able to uh, capitalize on those opportunities another opportunity could be if our whole team is going in or if we have bomb or you know yeah a lot of different types of opportunities right so we want to make sure we're intentionally looking for opportunities and we're not just running into their team when they have one two three four five almost six people looking at us right because here we're basically running in on our own Again, six people getting really aggressive off of nothing, right? So at the moment, we're a little too far forwards, a little out of position. Don't know if I'd pro like. I would probably recommend that you be on high ground here, not on the low ground. Mm. I was kind of thinking more about like splitting their attention and then just coming back, you know, like a sort of di mm. a distract the, sort of play. The, yeah. The the other thing to note here, right? is that we're going in like when half of our team isn't really here in the fight, right? Like McCree's not in the fight. You have Roadhog who's a little bit in the fight, but he's like halfway away, right? He's not like, he's a little bit far. Ana's a little bit out of the fight. Hanzo can see Mercy's a little bit out of it. Um, I don't think the fight's really progressed yet and we're getting aggressive. The other thing I would note is that this once again, kind of like on the first point, is a bad time to be engaging, right? Why would we engage them this early when they, you know, aren't in bad positioning yet when we could again no man's land make them walk this entire distance where we our team as a spam composition could mm -hmm. be spamming them that entire mm -hmm. time right or, or alternatively if they go down this way then we can just shoot them while this is a, a choke point right this is mm -hmm. a tiny little funnel and again same thing we this would put this in bad put them in bad positioning or if mm -hmm. they go top here this would probably be you know one of the better options they could take um but going top here once again tiny little choke point that we can shoot them through um but we're engaging here before they've walked through bad positioning and then therefore we're not pushing them through that bad positioning and um yeah besides that it's not super useful in a lot of cases to just be a distraction without actually getting any value like if you just exist you're not really doing very much in particular like that's like a tracer player right who would say um you know who isn't doing anything and then is like oh, but I was being a distraction. Well, you're not having an impact if you're being if you're just being a distraction. You want to be a distraction. That's a part of your job description. And yes, as diva, that's part of your job uh, description. But it's not the only thing within your job description. And if you're only being a distraction, you're not actually accomplishing anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Ryan's doing. He's being a little weird. Yeah, it, it, he's really weird. This whole game, he was weird. I just felt like he might have been a... Anyway. Alright. Um. 
Why don't we like rewind this slightly bit? Because there's the, we we see like a, I see I'm seeing a lot of like micro like misplays. So let's just rewatch a little bit here. So first off, I'm noting that we turn around to focus a nano ball instead of going for like the Ana who's isolated, right? So like who who's gonna be easier to kill, like a nano wrecking ball or an Ana? Mm. Obviously the Ana, yeah. Okay. Um, so I probably would say that you're going to find more value out of, out of going and shooting at the Ana because really, like if we're thinking like we can defense matrix, like, yeah, but like most of balls kit revolves around things that defense matrix can't eat. Right. The only thing we'd be eating would be his shots, which is, I, I suppose it's, minor. it's, it's kind of wrong thought patterns. Cause the thought pattern is, ah, they're nearly at the payload. Um, and it should be, um, who can I pick off? Oh, yeah, payload ma does not matter at all in this instance. Yeah, no, no, I get that, payload, I get yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Watching it back, I can see that, but in yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment, you just seem like, ah, oh, they go, payload. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I do. Very nice. Okay, just noticing a lot of habits of, like, yeah, clicking defense had no health. <laughs> I had no health, so I didn't want to get demeked. Okay. Um. What happened if to somebody? What happened? Was, what happened if to some Like, I think if it, it's like if there's some random damage comes around there, when the fight's already dead, my matrix is going to recharge, so I might as well what, gamble on. Not what would happen if somebody shot at you after your defense matrix was gone? But that's why I was back in round to where our healers were. Well, then why you need defense matrix? It's just a safety mechanism. <laughs> well, then what if somebody waited till your safety mechanism was gone? Well, right. so in this situation, right, when we see that nobody can see us, nobody's on our screen, people can't shoot at us if they're not on our screen. That's, that's how it works. Like, it's impossible for them to be shooting at us if we can't see them right here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, On top of that, we're in the process of, of getting, oh, sorry, we're not in the process of getting healing. Um, That was my bad. But, you know, just watch for where people are just because i you know i don't think that it's like really doing anything there and then like if we did need it in like two seconds we wouldn't have it never die. Noticing that we're activating boosters, or sorry, not boosters, our missiles from way too far away in a lot of cases here. Right. Right. Yeah. So notice on like the Genji when we go up against the Genji, like kind of watch how we activate this. First off, we fly a little bit. Like we probably could have flown to him, but instead we kind of fly up and away from him. And then we missiles from like all the way back here. Mm -hmm. And then when we're about to like walk a little bit closer to him in a moment here, and then basically missiles don't do anything there because of that. Yeah. And notice here in that a makes, second. That makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. And then here when we go in on the the Ana, like we're boosting at her, so we know in a couple seconds we're gonna be like really close to her, where our missiles will actually mm -hmm. do a lot of effective damage. So we activate them here. Yeah. Which just means that a large, like, pretty much all of it misses when, now we're at this distance where all those would hit if we're at this distance, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Was that on a, an opportunity? Well, it seemed like it, but, I mean, I guess she was two with her team. She, had, she wasn't out of position, so she hadn't really come very far. I would say that it's an opportunity for a kill, but is you know you there's going to be plenty of opportunities for kills in your mm. games but you can't trade one for one all the time right one for one yeah. is a, usually a very very terrible idea so yeah. here in this instance we we see the ana and we go in a little bit too far and we're not paying attention to where the rest of the team is right mm. we're not keeping our ears open we're not watching the respawn times and that's an awareness thing of making sure we're paying attention to our environment because when we don't then we end up just you know boosting in the Ana and then getting demeked afterwards, right? So we want to make sure we're intentionally watching for where is the enemy team because there we just get a little bit too aggressive. Oh, then we bomb the beta this out. Oh, Lucio stands into it. Very nice. All right, and then we get bailed out. Yeah, I know. I get what you're saying. It worked out, but, you know, yep. it, I had to use an ult and it didn't, you know, it could have easily not, so, yeah. Yep. Alright, way too aggressive at the moment. <laughs> That's a scenario where we got 
just kind of got aggressive off of nothing. Um, we still make it out. Um, I would probably say the reason, one of the reasons for this is because the Ryan's actually pretty bad for some reason. He shields when he doesn't need to, and I think that's what you yeah. were saying too. Is they'll just uh, he'll he'll sit there he hard wasn't shielding. Hit, he wasn't hitting. Yeah. It was really odd. Yeah, and I think I was kind of trying to take advantage of that, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if he was like smurfing and taking the mick or something because he ended up like later on in the game he started playing really hard and playing complete, completely differently. So yeah, so here. Weird. Right, we have four people looking at us. Right, um, Anna sleeps us, nades us, Reiner swings at us, Reaper shoots at us. We die. Now, the Anna right ends up not doesn't have sleep. It's just off a of cooldown by a couple seconds, which isn't something we had control over. Right, and then for some reason Reiner doesn't swing at us, and then that means that we don't end up getting melted. But we could have very very easily gotten melted here. Um, keep in mind that just because a mistake is not punished doesn't mean it's not a mistake, right? And we've seen a couple times mm -hmm. where that's been the case. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like the same thing as last time. Um, but let's say, for example, this is, you know, what, what rank are you currently? 25, 25 20. 20. Okay. What is a diamond game? Do you think that they might po possibly punish this? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. So if we are trying to be a diamond player, if we're trying to rank up and get better, then we need to play as if we're diamond uh, a diamond player and we're playing mm -hmm. up against other diamond players. Whereas here, we end up getting punished for this mistake. Or we sorry, we don't end up getting punished, but it's still a mistake. Yeah. I mean, I kind I, I understand what you're saying totally, but I would, the only thing I'd say to that is that you kind of play what's in front of you so you know if the ryan is not going to swing at me i do tr you know i was thinking well i'm going to try and take advantage of that and get don't behind his shield, don't su don't suicide into it it's the same thing as the onic if it, as the ana just a couple the last fight right if yes you might be able to get a kill out of it but no you're i mean like here in the situation you should be dead you should have yeah, lost your yeah. mega because mm -hmm. of it because we're again we're running in 1v4 1v4 right and that's not mm -hmm. going to work at you know, higher ranks, or even sometimes, even in in, our, in these games, they might get punished for it. Right? Yeah. Reaper hits one more shot. Anna has sleep there. You're dead. Right? Reinhardt swings once. Right? We're dead. Right? So, therefore, we might we want to make sure that we're not getting aggressive off of no opportunities and running into four yeah. people because that's not how Diva want Diva wants to operate. Fair enough. Spin. Okay. Noticing a large amount of time being spent shooting at the Reinhardt. And again, not like just target priority of like Ryan and Ball aren't who we want to be shooting at. And then we notice a lot of time where we are shooting at them um, and paying attention to them. And then therefore it's not really doing very much for us. Noticing as well that we're running straight at the Reinhardt and standing in front of him, which ends up getting us charged. So being, looking to stand to the sides of him. And then getting the mech to mines there. Um, also noting that we were positioning to start off the fight. We were not on high ground. Probably looking to take mm -hmm. high ground positioning there. Notice target yeah, priority. Ball again, yeah, and uh, I even thought this as I did it. <laughs> I remember thinking, ah, oh, you're just going for the biggest target. Oh, Reaper's like one HP there, right? Paying attention to health bars, right? Go for a couple of things, right? First off, here, let's look at the situation here, right? So, first off, I think we go to point here, but Ana's like an interim us, and we're not shooting at Ana. Yeah, um, but the payload's also an interim. <laughs> Which we can be shooting at Ana while standing right here, right? And contesting payload. That that's within reach of contesting payload. So we can shoot at Ana while doing this, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know, the shooting at Ana and then here Reaper look at Reaper's HP and then we shoot at Reinhardt. Right. Mm -hmm. So awareness, paying attention to health bars, paying attention to the people around us. Right. And again, our target priority has been Reinhardt and Ball and Nano targets this entire game, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Alright, and then we swap the ball, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just like, I mean, yeah, I don't know, dude. You're a bit younger than me, but it's like, I, I struggle with reactions to think fast enough. <laughs> mm. Yep, so, but it's, it's also like having it in, it's habits yeah, isn't it's it? it's, like, it's yeah. habits mm -hmm. be, and kind of pre-planning when you come into a game right and you know already 
who you should be shooting at, you're not going to shoot at the wrong things, right? Yeah. In, in most cases. Like, if you know Anna is better than Reinhardt to shoot at, and that's internalized within you, and that's a habit that's built in, is to shoot at the Reinhardt before Reinhardt, uh, or sorry, shoot at the Anna before Reinhardt, then it's not a matter of, oh, I, I needed to complicatedly think through this while I'm in the middle of a fight. It's just going to come naturally, right? Yeah. And that doesn't start out naturally. That yeah. starts out with the process of improvement. Do you recall us talking about the process of improvement within our gameplay? Not specifically. Yeah, so let's let's review. Or, you know, if, if we did talk about it, it's a review. If we didn't, then new topic. But while we go through our gameplay, right? So let's talk about awareness, right? Um, in general, because that's what we're talking about here. Um, you might say, right? Well, awareness is a pretty vague concept, and I don't have good reaction time. So how do I really? How do I work on awareness? How how does one get better at looking and listening, right? Um, well. Right? You get better at looking and listening the same way that you get better at anything that you're looking to get better at, and that is to make sure that while you are playing that you're focusing on that thing. Right, You're not going to go through your gameplay on autopilot or just play to play, and a lot of times, contrary to popular belief, you're not going to solely play to win, um, whereas that leads to stagnation. And instead, you want to focus on improvement, which leads to wins. And what that looks like within your gameplay is you're going to think in your head, awareness, 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 right? And when you give yourself, a, for example, let's say in this game, we gave ourselves like every 10 seconds, we were saying to ourselves, target priority, target priority, target priority, target pri priority. Mm -hmm. um, I, I doubt you would be as often looking at the yeah. Reinhardt and the Wrecking Ball, right? Yes. Um, and then if we are focusing on that thing, it's going to do better. And when we do that for a long enough period of time, that's different based off the person and how much time you have to dedicate and how good you are at, at this skill of improvement, right? If you focus on that for, let's just say, a week, right, then... It's no, then you master it, right? Or not, not completely master it, but you get good at, right? Good at it, right? You get a lot better than you are now, and therefore you don't need to put that much attention and focus into it. And you, you've got it down as a habit. Then you can move on to something else to work on, and that's the process of improvement. I would say, don't try to do everything all at once. That gets very overwhelming. You're not going to be able to go through a game and remind yourself of positioning, awareness, target priority, ability usage, right? And like. Do everything while you're playing. Focus on mm -hmm. one category of things or one to three smaller things within a category. Okay. So, um, based off of the... I, I'd i say that target priority is a very, very big thing when people have a fundamental misunderstanding of it because when it is... Or not... You understand it, but when it's not implemented, right? Yeah. Um, then you really just end up doing nothing, right? Because we can look back on our gameplay and or within the time that I've seen you playing and we've seen us get like a couple kills, but we see, we saw a lot of fights where we just didn't do anything. Like this fight where like we just accomplished absolutely nothing because we just were looking at tanks the whole time, right? And then whereas we had a nano boost and we probably could have just boosted at Ana and absolutely shredded her or looked at Reaper and just melted him with his one HP, right? So there are a lot of scenarios where we could have gotten kills and when we get more kills, that's going to lead to more wins. So target priority becomes very important when we're constantly looking at the wrong thing. Boost, uh oh. Uh, boost faster. I didn't have it. It wasn't charged, was it? It was. I seem to remember thinking it wasn't charged. No, we got it. <laughs> Damn. Walking straight yeah. into Reinhardt's face again, yeah. right, third time. I think it's because he was pissing me off so much with the way he's playing, <laughs> which is not the uh, not the reason to attack him. <laughs> yeah, and then also just within all outside of just charging straight at him, it was also just the target priority again with it within that mm -hmm. game. 
missiles from like across the map, which is like okay in certain situations. Probably I would say like it's okay if you're like not going to be near people anytime soon, but like we're probably about to push into people within the next mm -hmm. like three seconds. Yeah, which I means think that's definitely wanna. something I should take away with Diva is, is make I'm um, a lot closer before I yep. missile. Mm -hmm. On top of that, right now we're just playing a little bit faster. Okay, we got we went in. That's an opportunity. That's definitely a si here on these tanks. This is definitely a situation where you look at tanks because they're mm -hmm. both low and out of position, right? Mm -hmm. They're that. That's definitely fine. Okay, very good. All right, so we have bomb for next fight. And his voice lines the entire game. That's weird. <laughs> I know. I meant. I meant to get over the lip, and yeah, just got snagged. <laughs> hey, nice bomb. Okay, I like the target acquisition on soldier. I knew he was gonna hook there and pick one little step to the left and thought, mm -hmm. ah, that's that. <laughs> yep, alright, so very good fight. Alright. Good Reiner kill. Might wanna honestly just keep pushing here. If we see, like, if we. If we you see, I'm Seriously. saying group up because I don't want to be the one sat on the payload, but no one else. Yeah. I, I was um, I'm trying to add a hint to Moira to come, or someone to come to the payload. Yeah, um, let's, let's look back at the scenario. Yeah, so in this instance, yeah, it's definitely, it looks like they do just kind of walk off of it, which is unfortunate. Yeah, kind of same situation with missiles. He was EMP'd though. Oh, sorry, with the missiles. Yeah, yeah you're right. Back there, too far away. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, should have got. So here, <laughs> uh probably say steel target priority. Right, like who's easier mm -hmm. to who's going mm -hmm. to be easier to kill? Like a Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. Or like a have your one yeah. fourth HP is on Yana, right? Or mm -hmm. even a Lucio who's being shot at, like you know. Or we can just go for any of these guys. Lucio or Soldier who are hacked, don't you know, are being shot at by a Moira Orb and a Sombra, right? Probably gonna be much easier targets, and you can probably also sure. disengage a little bit faster too. You can like boost in, shoot a little bit, and then maybe like get back to the team a little bit, right? But here we ended up boosting a Reinhardt, and then not once again not really getting the kill on him. Missiles didn't really do anything, and then um, yeah, I definitely looking... need to do the thing of getting closer before activating missiles. Yep. Yeah, and then also looking the defense matrix there because we do get de mech while we still defense matrix, and we also tried boosting in and getting aggressive when we were like, uh, you know, like seventy HP still. <laughs> All right, so soldier ends up killing everything there. I really wanted to follow him then and then thought better of it. <laughs> mm, I think we hesitated slightly too long in that, right? Because here we can see that they're nowhere near cover, right? Um, they, they have nowhere to run. Maybe Soldier can make around the corner, right? But, you know, I look at that and see no one has anywhere to go. Right, but we give it a couple seconds, and then we fire it in. Well, now look how much closer Roadhog yeah. is to the corner, mm -hmm. and McCree mm -hmm. is to the corner, and on top of that, we let's see. So they were able to just get around it. Yeah. So just maybe slightly hesitated with it. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, that's, that's about it. And then also, if we could have possibly look looked to get it like just a little bit further, right, and then placement would be like right here, then we could possibly get them like even if they tried to run around into the room, sort of idea to go for as well. Mm -hmm. But that's you know slightly a little bit more complicated. When you're boosting into them, right? This I, I notice that this is a very big habitual thing. You need to think about your disengagement, right? So either you, when you boost into somebody, you need to be have an exit strategy in mind. So think, for example, you're boosting up to a high ground, then you can know you you know that you can just drop down immediately, or you use half of your boost to engage and then half of your boost to get away, or let's right. say you just drop on top of them and then use boost to disengage, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or the alternative, is, is, the, the times where you don't need to do that is if you have sufficient team protection and team values. So let's say like you boost in aggressively, but you have a Reinhardt in front of you. Or you boost in aggressively, but you have a monkey in front of you. Or you're full diving with six people. right? Then that's fine to, to hard boost in the people. All right? Another time is if you are going in on like a big opportunity or like somebody's isolated right? or you're in a duel. Right? If you're boosting in, for example, like their McCree sitting on high ground and you're boosting at a single McCree, what is you getting aggressive really do like why do you have to be scared of that? But here we're hard boosting, right? This is what you kind of call like a hard dive when one, two, three, four people can see us and shoot at us and we're out in the open without any boost now to disengage, mm -hmm. right? So therefore mm -hmm. I would imagine within the next like two seconds we get demect and we give it one, two, we defense it matrix out. Oh, just just barely stayed alive, right? So we, we end up staying alive there, but we've seen that happen over and over again. Um, make sure not just kind of boosting in off of nothing. That that's what you call hard diving versus soft diving. Hard, yeah, I actually, you know, I actually watched a video on this about Winston and uh, yep. and thought the same thing. And like, I do think about that when I play Winston. I'm like, oh, I won't hard dive if I haven't got my jump pack to get out. Or same concept. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh no. <laughs> Boost away from him. Uh, wait, probably use your boost to just get away from him and then just shoot him from outside of his distance instead of sitting on top of him. Mm -hmm. Kind of notice the missile thing again, All right? Usually your yeah. combo is going to be boosting at people with missiles and shooting, right? That melts people so singing fast. But we, we always end up using missiles as a spam thing, which isn't, again, it's not that you never do that, but it is. there's a lot of instances where we'll immediately need, need yeah, missiles afterwards. Yeah. Looking to close the distance while probably also getting above them would mean that we probably want to rotate over here. This gets us much closer. This means we're going to get more value out of pretty much our entire kit. Um, and then just be better positioning overall, right, than sitting where we are currently. Mm -hmm. God damn, I wish I activated my missiles closer now. <laughs> Every time I see that, it's like, it's annoying. Um, a lot of times we're like Reinhardt's on top of us and we'll just kind of let them stay there, right? Like here we had boosters again and we choose to just kind of sit here, right? Like we have, you know, notice we have boosters right now. And mm. we stay here for another one swing, and two swings, three swings, and then we run away. Yeah. Right? Mm. So just get away. Yep. As soon as he's, he's near you. Yeah. Because mm. again, like you, you have more range than him, and he does more damage than you when you're when you're on top mm. of each other. Now, if he was like one HP or something mm. of that sort, then that's fine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, before pushing up to the high ground, I probably just 
peak real quick for for healers because we were like down 200 HP and just getting get something healing you up here, so we're not down 200 HP. Request healing. A little bit slow to drop there. Maybe could have dropped to the mega health pack faster. I just spent a lot of time out of my mech in this uh, little passage yeah. of play. Which is going to be partly due to the team composition, which I would like recommend again. Like, um, if you do play other characters, like, um, yeah. I probably would recommend not playing Diva Zarya uh, or Diva Roadhog. Good, you know, not yeah. great composition. Um, besides that, it's also kind of our play style of we're just a little bit too over aggressive and we're kind of out in yeah. the open, right? So whenever we, I think that's my that's one of my my sort of thought pattern problems is that I think that I have to be the one being aggressive and leading the team and and making the plays. Yeah, divas. Otherwise, we, we won't yeah. win. <laughs> a, like a common thing that, that you know people say a diva is she's not a face tank, right? Um, Reinhardt kind of can do that because he has a shield and he has you know, mm -hmm. a lot of HP with armor right and he's gonna get a lot of health or you know, a lot of team support right um, so he can kind of face think but on diva you don't have a big old shield to do that with so if you're trying to be in front like just stand there in front of your whole team you're just gonna get shredded that's just how mm -hmm. it's gonna work and we've seen that happen over and over and over and over again so we want to make sure we're playing a little bit safer okay so okay. we're we're gonna leave here we're gonna go over the main points of the session do a quick review and then wrap up the session from there so um, let's just go through everything here. Um, ability usage, um, defense matrix. I think, or actually, I'm going to talk about something real quick within, within defense matrix because uh, I've seen it kind of. I don't think it's like too absolutely terrible, but there are there's a little bit of it. But um, defense matrix. Let's just talk about when do you use defense matrix, right? So in general, defense matrix has certain uses. You can use defense matrix to uh, when you are low, when you have teammates that are low. You can use it when you're eating up abilities and ultimates, when you're pushing in aggressively, and when you're backing out aggressive or we're backing out and playing passive, and then you can also use it when a t there's a ton of spam damage coming in, right? Um, those like, that would be, for example, like if your team gets grabbed, then you know they're going to be taking a bunch of damage soon, right? Um, those are times where defense matrix is is useful, and needed. Defense matrix is not needed when um, it's just kind of random spam damage, right? Or let's say no one's shooting at you. And within our gameplay, there are a lot of times where we would defense ma defense matrix, sorry, where um, no one was shooting at us, or we'd also do it like when it's just kind of spam damage, like you know you just have a McCree shooting at you, or you know. A soldier shooting at you right and it, we just kind of defense matrix randomly for it and it didn't really get us a lot of value in a lot of situations and it just ended up wasting it and we also didn't pay attention to the things that did matter like abilities right intentionally watch for abilities uh, a, a habit i'd recommend is at the very beginning of each game take a look at their team comp and look at what they're running and think through all the things that you can eat on their team abilities and ultimates and then that will actually help you um, watch for them so um, specifically ultimates a lot of times people don't really think about the ultimates they can eat right like they'll go oh yeah I know I can eat grav but they don't actively look to eat grav oh I know that I'm capable of eating pulse bomb and and may ultimate but they don't actually think about it while they're playing right so think about the ultimates you can and abilities you can eat before the game starts so in any case besides that just a couple times where we'd waste defense matrix the only time I have done that was where like if we had a reaper and I thought oh, I'll say I'll make sure I've got if I think he's got death boss and i'll have a full tank of uh <laughs> defense matrix yep mm -hmm. so um missiles make sure you're getting closer with it uh make sure we're not just purely using it first like when we're a mile away boosters um typically your combo is just boostering at people and, and missling sometimes i would notice it would maybe boost a little boost or sorry cancel our boost a little bit too late and we'd kind of boost up people and then just kind of keep going when we wanted to stop so um for habit i recommend like a minimum cancel on that isn't there yeah, so you so like, can has, like a minute. You have to boost for a minimum of two seconds or something. No, or a second. Oh, wait. Oh wait, maybe there is actually. Um, yeah. Actually, I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah, so it looks like you, you can actually only have to boost. cancel it after like yeah. a second or something. Yeah. So if you boost from real close and then immediately want to stop, you can't. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it looks like it, it's like a second, right? If it lasts, uh, if, if the boosters last you, you know, two whole seconds, it comes it up, you can see when it, when it says cancel, it like comes up after a, half, a second. Or yeah, whatever, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in any case, right, make sure canceling, because sometimes yeah. you just kind of run around with people. Um, besides that, um, our overall ability usage, probably say kind of like a, maybe like a medium priority, not super maybe maybe a low to medium somewhere around that range for you to work on right uh, ultimate usage is not really something we talked about honestly it's just kind of a low we didn't really discuss it too much um moving on mechanics target priority make sure we're shooting at the right things good you know don't shoot at tanks shoot at them when they're low or out of position or they're the only thing you can shoot at them but don't shoot at them the whole game right shoot yeah. it actively seek out the supports and dps and um pay attention to, and shoot at the people who are low hp make sure that um hmm, let's see was there anything else within mechanics i think honestly we didn't talk about a ton within mechanics um, i'm saying but just make sure you're trying to hit both shots not just one of them and then that was probably pretty much it but overall the the target priority was a pretty big thing right so overall yeah. that one probably goes to like a medium high Right. Um, That's probably one of the biggest problems in that game, really. Yep. When I think about it. Mm. Positioning. Say that Reinhardt was playing yeah. so weird that it made me like go after him, but that was not really the play. Yep. Positioning. Bunch of things within positioning. Make sure we're using cover. A lot of times we leave in and go into absence of cover. Make sure we're holding properly no man's land and choke points, and with both of them, we're holding at the end of them, not the beginning or the middle, right? Make sure we're taking high grounds. Uh, make sure, making sure, this one we didn't talk about yet, but get closer to people. There are a lot of times where we just kind of sit really far away. Diva can't do far away, right? This is what happens when we stand right next to somebody, right? This is what happens when we go 10 meters away, right? Melts on pretty much, you know, pretty similar. Now this is 20 meters away. Well, now this is taking us like 10 whole seconds to actually finish somebody off, right? Which is so much longer, and we'd spend a lot of time at that distance. So your preferred range is going to be within 10 meters. So you want to, if possible, be within this distance and try to stay there, right? Um, now, you're not always going to be able to, but try to get within that distance. Whereas a lot of times we just kind of chill at longer ranges when we didn't need to be. So get close the gap. Get closer. You can do that very easily with boosters. Right? That's what mainly what boosters is used for. Um, besides that, um, let's see what else is there. Don't don't over aggression. We had a lot of over aggression. We just kind of run into them. And then overall, that one goes to like a medium prior medium high priority as well. Um, within sorry, one thing to add into ability usage with boosters was um, making sure thinking of a way to get out. Right, with when, when we're boosting in, don't just boost into six people. Right, don't do that. Right, think of a way to disengage. We can, for example, do this like where we boost in, we we get aggressive, get a kill, and use the last second to boost out. Right, that's an option. You can boost in. We can drop from a high ground on top of somebody and then boost out. Right, like we can do this. Right. Um, and then we can just boost out to disengage. We can boost in if we have support. Don't just go in by yourself against six people, though. Right? That's not that's not that's not gonna be good. Um, then finally, we have awareness. Pay attention to your health bar. Pay attention to um, and then request healing when you're low. Pay attention to where is my team at? Where is the enemy team at? What's happening in the fight? Who's winning? Who's losing? Pay attention to um, enemy team health bars. So we know when to shoot at people who are low. Pay attention to kind of just where people are and what's happening in the fight around us. There are a lot of kind of odds and ends things here in awareness. Keep good audio awareness. Listen to your surroundings. Don't walk straight in front of a Reinhardt. Right? Overall, that one probably is like a medium to a medium high. So real quick, let's put that in order. Number one, I would probably say goes to positioning. Number two goes to mechanics. Uh, specifically, I would honestly just call that category target priority. Three goes to your awareness. Four goes to your ability usage. Five goes to your ultimate usage. Um, do you have any questions about anything we've gone over? Just anything else in general? No, no, I think that's helpful, mate. As always. Yeah, <laughs> alright. So then let me 